I, I will tell you something fundamental about myself. And I started that as a joke when I was in my mid-twenties. And I was realizing that I was always outside, always stepping outside of what was happening. And I was just observing. And I think I, I still don't, that's the way I still am. And I, my joke at the time was to say, I feel like I'm a, some kind of a journalist, but I work for no paper. I'm just there, you know, like if, as if living for me is like making a reportage. And I feel more and more that way. Actually, I was living quietly in the country, writing my little music. And I had a financial crash, and then I had not enough money to keep the house going, sold my house, paid most of my debts. And I moved to Montreal, that's five years ago now, six years almost, because I wanted to witness part of the apocalypse. There is a crack in everything. That's how the light gets in. It's true, true pain, true, true uh, darkness. We need to go through heavy darkness to see the light. People need to suffer collectively need to be afraid to panic and then they will say oh okay oh yeah oh yeah now I get it Okay, I wrote French songs, maybe 150, somewhere between 150 and 200 songs through my life, which is not many songs, I guess. But I never wrote an English song, and now I don't want to sing in French anymore. I really don't want to, you know? It's, I don't know what's exactly what's happening to me. Everybody seemed to know me Everybody just passed me by I've been playing here for four years at least Almost every day And some people know me and I know them We never spoke but it's, it's a good relationship Dracula by Bram Stoker, and I don't know, I don't know why, but I identify myself with 
those kinds of characters. And at one point, Dracula, he, he has some hosts in his castle, and he tells them how he enjoys solitude because he can travel through time and space in his mind very quietly. I think sitting on a chair, just thinking, it's fine, fine. We carry worlds in our minds, so why not explore them? I, there were some periods where I almost made a living out of it. <laughs> you know, yeah. when when you get you keep a job going, part time jobs and music, you, you can make some kind of a living. But at the end, I was everything was too much. You know, I had the house, and I had the too much recording equipment for the use I was making of it and too many instruments and too many taxes to pay, too many income tax reports to make and and yeah I was just going crazy and I just flushed everything, blew up my credit cards and you know I don't even have a driver's license anymore. I just let it go. I know I will never drive again. No. <laughs> I'll There's get no driven. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. I'll be a passenger <laughs> and see where the train is, goes. I remember too a distant bell, stars that fell like rain out of the blue. is true and the angels ask me to recall the thrill of them all then I shall tell them I remember tell them I remember Thank you. Have, have a good day. Are you? I'm homeless. Are you? Are you First Nation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cree Nations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love music, and I love the attitude that you have to come out and try to make a little money to support whatever you're doing. You know, I pay. You are. I pay part of my rent, and I eat on it. Because I'm I'm on the you know the Régie des Rentes in Quebec. Oh. Um, I get I get under three hundred dollars a month, okay. and the rest I it's the money I make in there. Yeah. Me I I'm not even on welfare. They, no. They well, me neither. Me them, no God. welfare. Fuck them. Fuck the welfare. Yeah, yeah. Fuck the welfare. Man. I wish you the best of luck. Hey, you too, happy man. Happy and happy New Year. Gave away 
lot of stuff, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was literally on the street. I started sleeping in the Maison du Père and the Welcome Hall and Old Brewery. Mission Old Brewery is... I used to call it the... Softcore concentration camp. So ugly that place. You, you're treated like you're an animal. You know, standing naked or wearing your 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 slips. You know, standing in a corridor waiting to freezing in a corridor waiting to go to the shower, and just before you go to the shower, they give you a towel. And then, if you exceed a certain time, somebody comes and says, hey, rah, rah, rah. And, <laughs> and I, I never had been on the street or anything before. I mean, I remember the first night I ended up there, it was nine o'clock. You know, and some people had told me I should have gone there in the afternoon, but I was like, it was worse than any stage fright, you know, having, think of going to sleep in a place like that. And I mean, for nine months, I became, I never, I never put a bare foot on the floor in any of those places. Yeah. 